Hey y'all, I'm gonna show you how to build and use this index futures comparison chart that you may have seen me use on my live streams, or you may just need a way to compare all the different indexes to help give you confidence in reversals and continuations in your day trading. First, I'm gonna to switch to regular trading hours because it's a lot easier to show you how this works if we kind of tune out all of the noise that happens after hours. There's so much consolidation that happens after hours that a lot of the times this just kind of makes it harder to see what's going on. So one of the things you need to know is first of all, you kind of have to find the right zoom and it'll depend on how large your chart is and that sort of thing. But what you're looking for is a way that you can kind of see these different separations and the peaks and valleys in this chart. So what I have going on here is it looks like a big jumbly mess a lot of the times, but I can see what all of the important indexes are doing all at the same time. I have everything color coded so that whenever I have these indexes on another chart, it's colored the same and it makes it really easy for me to see this chart. But in general, what I do is I color all of the indexes, these pretty pinks and purples and blues. And then the more bold warning indexes I have in these bold, more crayon colors. So what I'm looking for is if we have agreement between the indexes, and you'll hear me call them the sisters a lot. So if all four sisters are in agreement, they'll be moving together and their lines will be going the same direction. And when we have the dollar index trading in the opposite direction of the indexes, it really makes for a stronger trade. And that goes for the volatility indexes as well. The US dollar and the VIX will trade in the opposite direction of the indexes most of the time. So that'll help give us clues that we are in the right trade at the right time. So I'm gonna pair this with my other system of levels and anything else that I'm watching, but this will help give me another confirmation of if my trade idea is a good one or not. So what I'm looking for again are these kind of peaks, valleys, and separations. When we have the indexes trading in a, the, the same direction together and the other two moving in the opposite direction together, we know that this is a strong supported trade. Hopefully we were able to get in somewhere down here at a level or with some other indication and then we're supported when we saw this little hook forming on the bottom of these indexes. You can see they came down and we're kind of forming these little V shapes. I like to call them kind of hooks. And then we'll have the same thing uh, when we start having a reversal. So all the way up here, we start having this hook in a downward direction. So that's gonna give us a warning. If we look down here, sure enough, the dollar in the volatility index had the hook on the bottom in the opposite direction. So throughout the day, if we have a big jumbly mess like this, this will happen when the market is in a, a period of chop and you'll see it is just this jumbly mess and that kind of helps show you to stay out. We'll have something like, like this happen where we'll have like a sudden move in the market and all of the indexes are taking a dive down together and that'll kind of form there. And that happens when we have really quick news candles and things sometimes, and those are harder to trade. But something that we can trade is when we kind of, and I'm gonna change to zoom here so that you can see this happening a little bit better. And this is that kind of cross that I was talking about that we'll look for. And sometimes these guys won't be hugging together. I mean, th these are the volatility guys down here, the US dollar and the VIX. So they, they won't always be hugging, but we're looking for the general trend and the general direction. And we want it to be in the opposite of the, the other guys, the indexes, the sisters. So if the indexes are trending down and these guys are trending up, then this is a good trade. The second these things start turning and you'll see these all hooked on kind of the same two minute candle there, they hooked downward and started moving back towards the center together. So you'll see them kind of spread out and then come back together. And those are kind of the ebbs and flows and cycles in the market. You need to kind of understand the market in these different cycles. It'll really help you understand all of these different little peaks and values and highs and lows that happen in the market. So that's the kind of thing that we're looking for. It's a confirmation that you can kind of add to your system and another way to look at how all of the indexes are trending together. I just mentioned that I like to use this on the two minute chart. It happens to be my favorite, but I encourage you to use really any time frame of chart that makes sense to you. I've gone ahead and loaded a brand new fresh two minute chart here to show you how to build this. So again, this is in trading view, but if you have another platform that'll allow you to do line charts and add comparison symbols, 
hopefully you can replicate this in some way, shape, or form. The first thing I like to do is just take off the volume because it's just going to be noise later and I should be watching that on another chart anyway. This chart's going to be smaller on my screen. This is not going to be the chart that I'm trading off of. Right now this is a candle chart so the first thing I want to do is change this from a candle chart to a line chart. So in trading view to do this you can go up here and there's a little candlestick sitting up here. If you hover it says candles. If you click on that, these are all the different chart types that you can have. So I'm going to change this from candle to line. And so now I have a line chart for the ES futures. This might start out a different color for you. I think a lot of times the default might be more of a royal blue, but just change this to whatever color suits your fancy to be your ES color. To load a symbol to a chart, you probably know you can either just start typing or you can come up here and type in a symbol in the symbol search but you may have overlooked this little button before. This little plus button next to the symbol search is the compare or add symbol. And that's what we're going to use to add the other symbols to the chart. So I'm gonna start with NASDAQ. That's the first sister I wanna add. So I'll come up to symbol and I can just type in NQ. So when I type in NQ, I'm gonna get all these different options, but what I'm looking for is the ES mini NASDAQ 100 futures. And if I expand this, then I'm going to get all of these different contracts. For this chart, I like to just watch the continuous contracts and I'll let it update for me. And, you know, maybe this contract is going to roll at a different time, but I'm watching another chart to actually trade on. So these numbers aren't going to throw me off. They're going to roll at the same time for the most part. All the indexes will anyway. And so we can just go ahead and let them show their relative strength and weakness on this chart. Plus, it's, we're really just using it intraday anyway. So when you just hover over the symbol that you're looking at, in this case, the NQ1 exclamation point for uh, the NASDAQ continuous contract on TradingView, it might be different on your broker depending on which platform you're using. You get these other options to the right and they're same percent scale, new price scale, and new pain. And what new pain is, is if you add an indicator to your chart like RSI or MACD, it's going to add a line and then another section on the bottom of your chart. And that's a pain. So if we pick new pain, it's going to put it below. And that's not what we want. We want it to be in the same pain with the ES line chart. So we have the same percent scale and the uh, new price scale. And what they're talking about is the scale on the right. So this is the price scale. And a percent scale is going to show in comparison, in the percentage comparison, how it's moving up and down. And I don't really find that chart super helpful. Feel free to play with it if you want to. But what I use on this chart is when we hover here, going to new price scale. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that and show you all what that looks like. So now we have a new candle chart added on top of the ES chart that's showing us the NASDAQ. We can see it right here. And that new price scale was added to the left over here. I'm gonna go through this first NASDAQ one slowly and then I'm gonna add the other ones quickly. So if you pay close attention to this NASDAQ one, the other ones should really be review and make this really easy. So now that we've got this NASDAQ candle chart overlaid on top of the ES chart, we have two different price scales. We have the ES price scale on the right and you probably can't see it but underneath there, there's an A. And then we have the NASDAQ price scale on the left. And then underneath there, it's definitely underneath me right now, it has a Z. And those are the labels for that price scale. So if you right click on the candles, you'll get an option down here where you can pin to scale. So right now it's scale Z. Uh, like I said, it's right underneath me. And then we have some options over here. We can pin it to scale A, pin to a new scale on the right or no scale full screen. This chart lives pretty small on my screen. It doesn't take up very much space. So I don't want all of these different price scales taking up all of this space uh, vertically and just uh, horizontally and taking up half of my chart. So I'm gonna choose no scale just to get rid of it entirely. So that's how you get rid of that. So the next thing that we need to do is make sure that this isn't a candlestick chart. So what we can do again Market is you can right click and go down to settings. But I want to show you the other place you can get to settings is up here. So it's added the NASDAQ basically like an indicator. So now you'll have the settings here that you can go to also. 
So one of the first things on the, the you can go to, we have the inputs, that's just which chart it is. And then the style, it's showing candles. So if you just change this candles to line, then we have a line chart. And on my charts, I like NASDAQ to be this uh, magenta pink color. So I'm gonna go ahead and color it that way. And then I have the color and that one's done. So now that that one's done and I've kind of stepped you through what all of the different options are, I'll show you how to add a bunch of them at once so this goes a little bit faster. So if we go back up to compare, we can just start typing in all of the different charts that we want to add together. So first I can do, um, well we need to do the DAO, so that'll be the YM, expand, hover, new price scale, it's there. Now, if I don't click out of here, this will stay up here and I can add more really quickly. So the next one I want to add is the Russell. So RTY, we'll expand that. There's the continuous new price scale. Now uh, we'll also need to add the dollar. So DXY, dollar currency index, new price scale, and then the VIX, VIX, new price scale. This is what I was talking about earlier where we get all of these different lines taking up all of the space on the chart. So now we need to get rid of them. So what I do first is assign them a color so I can figure out what's going on here. Sure, it has the price, but it's gonna be visually easier if I go ahead and assign them a color first. So we can go up to the YM, hover, go to settings. I'm gonna make the YM a line chart and I like my YM chart to be purple. Okay. Russell, settings, line, blue, dollar, we'll make this line green, makes sense, right? VIX, line, orange, and there they all are. We still have all of these extra price scales going on, but now I can really easily see which one's which because it's color coded the price scales also. So I can just right click on the green line because that's a dollar over there, uh, right there, and do pin to no scale. So we can find the purple one, right click. I didn't right click properly. If you don't have the right option, you didn't right click in the right place. So now I've clicked on it properly, we can get rid of it. Um, this line is the ES line and I can tell because it's added the other prices to that line. So what it's doing is just showing you the ES price scale, but it's putting it, it's putting the price labels for the other indexes where they would be relatively on the ES price scale, if that makes sense. So we still have these other two to deal with. We have the orange one. We'll go ahead and get rid of that, no scale. Blue one, no scale. So there is that chart. It's really pretty simple. And then you gotta get your zoom right. And like I said, if, you're, if it's after hours, like uh, the market just closed. So that's why the VIX has stopped moving is that the market's closed. If you go to regular trading hours, it'll get rid of all that for you. And you can start kind of studying how all these crosses and things work. So thanks for joining me for that little quick lesson. I'm trying to keep covering all of my different systems. So just bear with me. Keep watching the playlist and the videos and joining me for lives. And hopefully we'll get you making a lot of profit really quickly here. So love y'all. Take care. Don't forget to like and subscribe.